I'm half South African and I haven't been back since 2019, so join me to a trip back home. I'm gonna show you what it's like to explore Cape Town from a local perspective, give you activity ideas, restaurants, and have you tag along with me and my best friend and join in on some of the fun. If you're new here, feel free to check out some of my other travel content, like and subscribe, and let's get into it. I woke up at 4 a.m. to catch my flights. I was so sleep deprived, and then guess what? Turns out my flight was delayed and I was gonna miss my connection. Right as I had gotten there, they had closed the gate and I was panicking because I could see the plane right there. And I think the pilots could see that I literally fell to my knees and started crying. So they actually let me on the plane. Honestly, I was so lucky it made the 14 hour flight feel bearable because i was like at least i'm on the plane anyways my dad came and picked me up and we had a beautiful sunset drive to his house this is gonna be my first time back since i was 19. to wind down my dad made us his famous g and t's which i will show you the recipe for later in the video I was gonna mention this earlier, but I had to tell you my crazy story. But if you're trying to fly into South Africa, I really recommend using Google Flights to find the cheapest options. And in this vlog, I'll also be sharing with you areas you can stay in and what you should do while you come and visit Cape Town. In the meantime, enjoy me getting ready and having my first morning here. Push this button for like 16 seconds. Okay. Okay. Uh, handle, it's to tamp it down. It should go green, it's fine. Now that I've had my morning coffee, let's do a quick little house tour. For background, I grew up in Singapore, so my dad has lived in Asia for the past 25 years. So of course, throughout his time living there, he really appreciated the culture and... Now let's go upstairs to the bedrooms and my favorite parts of the house. ...would buy a lot of art from local vendors. I honestly love what my dad did with the place. I never expected him to be good at styling, but I kind of love this maximalist style. And all of the bedrooms have different themes. This is the Indian room because he lived there for nine years. This is the room Caitlin was sleeping in and I forgot to take a video of my room But you'll see it in the vlog and this is my favorite part of the house This is the sunroom lounging area with a view of the garden and it also has a really nice cocktail bar I love sitting here and reading or enjoying a drink Today we're gonna quickly pick up my friend Caitlin from the airport I bought her some flowers because I wanted to make her arrival just a little bit more special And then as soon as she got here we went out to get some breakfast in Musenberg Which is a really cute little beach town It's famous for these colorful changing houses that you've probably seen on postcards of South Africa But it's a very quaint little beach everyone here is very chill and relaxed We got breakfast at this cafe I got these wrapped bacon things called bacon pockets or something It was really good And later this evening we were having a braai <laughs> at my family's house in South Africa. I feel like I'm saying it wrong, but a braai is basically a traditional barbecue with a lot of meats, potatoes. It's basically a South African version of just like a classic barbecue night. The next morning, we took some time to just relax in the sun before getting ready to go wine tasting. We were going to Groot Constantia. I feel like I'm just gonna pronounce everything wrong, so maybe I'll just have my dad come on here and pronounce it. Groot Constantia. Thanks, Dad. But this winery is one of the oldest in Cape Town and it is gorgeous. Empty glass, I just... <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> This wine tasting included five different wines that we could try and we could actually pick them out. And of course, no wine tasting is complete without this happening. We woke up early to get ready for a gentle hike in my favorite gardens in Cape Town. Also, had to show you how to make my favorite childhood breakfast. Having come here to South Africa every Christmas, this is something I would always eat. And you're gonna think it sounds gross, but trust me, it's actually so good. But you spread butter on toasted bread, and then you spread this anchovy paste, or as we call it, fish paste, on top. Funny enough, it was discontinued, and I'm not sure why, because I love it. A staple in my family and in South Africa. Have you ever had this before? It's actually really good. <laughs> We then took off for the gardens and this is the price to enter. We also wanted to have a larger breakfast so we stopped first to get one. Their food arrived and my my <laughs> meal has a little rosemary too. Ooh. We look so sad. <laughs> <laughs> We were laughing at the fact that they put my side sausage before the rest of my food, so it looked like all I was eating was this tiny little sausage. I actually got this Mediterranean bowl that was so good with grilled eggplant and egg and falafel. After letting our tummies rest a little, we then took a beautiful walk around the gardens. Going out 
to dinner now, but first we're gonna walk around, is it Cox Bay? Cox Bay? Go and do a little boutique shopping. It's a little cold and windy today, so didn't get to go to the beach, but that's okay. We have another week and a half here, so I'm gonna hit the beach more the rest of the week. But yeah, let's go to dinner and I'll bring you with us. The stores here are super cute, especially if you want a souvenir that isn't too touristy. Also love that they used cards as price tags in this store, so cool. We then came here for dinner. They have nice seating right by the water and the train tracks. I love that their menus felt like newspaper. We got some nachos and then we were actually serenaded with music. You can see I felt slightly awkward and I just stuck to eating my food. But this view was breathtaking and just such a nice ambiance. For my main meal, I got a paella, which was really, really good. Right, so you, you're um, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to steal some chips. Oh, boy. <laughs> like little kids coming to the scratch pad. <laughs> now if you're ever in Cape Town on a rainy day, this day was kind of gloomy and miserable, so all we could do was an indoor activity, but come to the scratch patch. I was laughing earlier about how I felt like a little kid because this is where we would go every single year we came to visit family in South Africa. You get to pick out little rocks and it's just such a fun little thing to do. Even as an adult, I feel like a kid going, but I love it. For lunch, we came here, and this is a spot that me and my family would always come and get fish and chips at. I was really craving sushi, so that's what I had. Today, it was finally sunny enough to go to the beach, so this is our walk down to Musenberg. The funny thing is my dad wouldn't let us go anywhere without him, so it was like having an escort everywhere we went. It was like we were back in the 1950s or something. My dad wanted me to add that it's because he really cares about us, so it's actually so sweet and loving. We got a couple coffees and then laid out on the beach. It was such a beautiful sunny day. I also got this wrap that was so good, had chicken and pesto. Then after laying on the beach and swimming a bit, we came back and I'm going to show you how to make a gin and tonic, but this one has a little bit of a twist on it. I'm copying my dad's recipe that makes it a little less sweet with half soda water and half tonic and then you add a shot of Campari. So we spent the whole afternoon just tanning and relaxing at the beach and then came back to the pool. But now we're gonna go and get some beers at this restaurant that I really love in Musenberg, but they also have different locations in Cape Town. So I'm gonna bring you with me. Honestly, the last few days have been just like very comfortable and casual because I'm also working remote this week. So we haven't been doing a little too much, but we have some things coming up this week. We're going to some exciting beaches and safari later on the weekend. I'm really excited. It's really casual here. So I'm just wearing this open back top with my denim shorts. This is like my casual beachy girl boho. Let's go get a beer and an outfit. It's so nice coming here to watch the sunset and getting a nice drink. Cheers! You can basically call me one of the bros at this point. She drinks beer, what can I say? The next day, it was time to go for another wine tasting. We were leaving really early this morning to drive an hour to Vechelechen. I'm saying that so wrong. But the name of this winery literally means far away. You also pay a small fee to enter, but it's worth it. This is the most gorgeous place we went to. We were waiting for our wine tasting reservation, so we spent 15 minutes walking around the property. Me and Caitlin were matching with our cute little sweater cover-ups. We felt so preppy. We are currently touring the grounds before doing our wine cellar tour. <laughs> I feel like we look like two posh ladies on holiday. <laughs> Did you say it? How do you say the Brits say it? Abroad. They, yeah. <laughs> We're abroad. We're abroad. <laughs> To take a tour of the cellars, they drove us up in this van and we got a beautiful view of the vineyards on our way. It was nice to hear about the history of the winery, as well as get to check out where they make and process all of their wines. Our guide was explaining to us too how different barrels can change the flavor profiles of wine. I'm honestly not that much of a whiny, whatever you call it, foodie, whiny. <laughs> so it was nice for me to learn a little more. And then they gave us these grapes to try as we were checking out the vineyards. They were surprisingly sweet. I thought wine grapes would be sour but they were good. When we got back, we got to try four of their wines and our guide whose name was Chili was so nice. He made it kind of like a fun game for us. He didn't tell us what any of the wines were and it was up to us to guess. So he gave us these cards and this is me trying to act like I knew what I was doing. I think my next career will be as a sommelier or however you call it because 
clearly I'm just an expert, but he gave us these cards with all of their wines and taste profiles so we could try to guess for ourselves. Then afterwards, we went for a nice lunch at the restaurant they have on the property. I think me and Caitlin were on our fourth glass of wine at this point, so we were feeling a little silly, of course. We got this bread for the table and this was one of the best chicken Caesar salads I've ever had in my life. We drove back an hour in the car, I took a nice little nap and then got ready for our evening. My dad was really excited to take us to this market that they have on Wednesdays and if you ever have a trip to Cape Town, I highly recommend coming. They host a bunch of local businesses and food pop-ups. I was especially excited for the food portion. I got these beef samosas and then I've always wanted to try Ethiopian food so I got some from this stall and it was so good. Also, can you tell I was so embarrassed filming myself in public? I felt like everyone was looking at me but I'm in my food blogger era so I had to get it done. And of course we needed some dessert so we got this gelato before calling it a night. So we're going surfing this morning and my hairstylist always said to me you should put in some leave-in conditioner or just like conditioner and wet your hair before you get into salt water if you have had treated hair like me. Like I've highlighted my hair blonde, so quickly putting in some of this leave-in conditioner from Redkin and then I'm gonna tie my hair up, get ready for a surfing lesson with Caitlin. So excited and I'll take you with me. <laughs> I'm actually really proud of myself for taking care of my hair. I think my hairdresser David would be very proud of me. You're welcome, David. We came to this surf school and they were so nice. I also loved the sign they had on the wall. I thought it was really funny. And I really need to buy myself a GoPro because I didn't film when we were out on the water, but I was using a seven foot six board and I felt really proud of myself because I only learned how to surf maybe about a year ago and I'm slowly getting really into it. Bought my first wetsuit and this is me washing it because you should always take care of it. I love the little smiley it has on the knees. And after a good surf session, I was starving. So I got the same wrap that I had before because I just love it. It's so good. And we ate while on the way to boulders, which is the famous Thank penguin God. beach in Cape Town. There's another section of this beach that you can actually lie out and sometimes the penguins will come up and swim to you. But we came to the side that is more of a blocked off reserve and we got to really just see the penguins enjoying themselves. And yes, this may be a very touristy thing to do, but honestly, I don't care. I love it here. And right outside, you can also buy some souvenirs from locals selling them on the street. <laughs> this was probably our busiest day of the trip. We took my dad to go bar hopping with us because it was first Thursdays, which my friends that are also from South Africa said is a big tradition in Cape Town. Basically, a lot of art galleries will have openings and cool events going on, and a lot of people just hit the bars. It's a really, really fun environment. And the fact that we took my dad bar hopping with us was even better. We of course got dinner first, and then we went to this bar that my friend recommended, but on our way stopped to write these little notes of gratitude that this shop was doing, so cute. The next day we went to this restaurant for lunch, another great spot to hit up in Cape Town if you visit. It's like tapas style, so I recommend getting a few things and sharing with everyone. We got nine dishes in total. This was probably my favorite restaurant we went to while in Cape Town. We also tried Springbok and it was actually so good. My dad and Caitlin didn't like it, but I loved it. Also in this area, there were really cute shops and boutiques. The next day, we packed up our things and took a road trip so that we could go and do a safari. That vlog is going to be coming soon, so keep an eye out on my channel and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching this vlog. If you got to this point in the video, comment where you would want to go if you came to Cape Town, and I'll see you in the next video.